To open the year for the heavyweights, Mike Tyson made his return to the ring against controversial former IBF champion, sort of, Francois Botha. The bout, controversial as it would be, is perhaps most famous for what may be Iron Mike's most badass and epic entrance ever, seeing him try to recapture his apex intimidation to the tune of DMX's intro from It's Dark and Hell is Hot. Would it work, or had Tyson's mystique been vanquished for good? Let's find out. Both have managed to outbox and outpoint the rusty Tyson over the first four rounds before being floored in round five. Both have tried to answer the count but slumped to the canvas multiple times before referee Richard Steele stopped the fight. Over the course of the fight, Tyson allegedly tried to break Botha's arm in the clinch. Logically promoted as undisputed, the two men who emerged atop the 1990s mountain met to decide the undisputed heavyweight world champion. The history of division within this decade led to this fight, dating back to Riddick Bowe's defeating of Evander Holyfield and refusing to defend the title against Lennox Lewis. Lewis and Holyfield were on a collision course of their own, dating back to 1993 when Holyfield was prevented from unifying against Lewis. At last, they would meet, and at last, we would have an undisputed heavyweight champion. There was a bit of tension between the two in the buildup as well. On fight night, Lewis is largely considered to have outworked and outboxed Holyfield, but the judges did not see it this way and instead had the fight as a split decision draw. The punch stats show that Lewis did more than enough to secure the victory. Clearly, this was an effort to keep the public invested for a potential rematch. After all this time, there was still no undisputed champion, though many saw Lewis as the uncrowned undisputed champion. It was a travesty, and the sanctioning bodies benefited greatly from the ordered rematch scheduled for November. Undefeated heavyweight contender Ike Ibeabuchi met undefeated middleweight turned heavyweight Chris Bird. Ibeabuchi was able to stop Bird in the fifth after two knockdowns. Bird would rebound to become one of the most notable contenders of the 2000s. His notable victories include those over Vitaly Klitschko, David Tua, and Evander Holyfield. Unfortunately for the president, this would be his last bout and he would never challenge the winner of Lewis Holyfield. A promising young career was derailed by Ike's legal issues. He was charged with sexual assault and later found to have bipolar disorder. Upon release, he violated parole in 2016 and is currently struggling with immigration issues as he waits for his swearing in ceremony for citizenship. What could have been? for Ike Ibeabuchi. Maybe his plans of a comeback will still materialize. The Klitschko family name was at risk of extinction when brother Vitaly Klitschko took on WBO champion Herbie Hyde. Klitschko dominated Hyde with two knockdowns before winning by stoppage in the second when the referee felt Hyde had had enough. It was a convincing victory for Vitaly and brought great press to the family name. Herbie Hyde fizzled out from here as a heavyweight, eventually dropping down to cruiserweight and retiring in 2010. In a controversial result, former lineal champion Shannon Briggs and Francois Botha fought to a draw. A draw, despite the fact that Botha appeared to do enough for the victory. 
The fans and announcers openly disagreed and it seemed Briggs had been saved from another loss, akin to the George Foreman matchup. Briggs later told of how this was his most painful fight of his career. A torn left bicep, stomach ulcer, poor training conditions in the form of bad altitude and too cold weather, broken ribs during the fight, cauliflower ears, and stitches over both his eyes. It's amazing he was even able to hang in there and hold his body together, wow. Big physical and mental beatdown, but the cannon pressed on. It was the final 1990s fight for both men. See you in the 2000s. Let's go, champ. New WBO champion Vitaly Klitschko, redeemer of the family name, returned four months later. After two knockdowns, he scored a third round technical knockout over Ed Mahone. The action was stopped after Mahone rose wobbly from said second knockdown. On the undercard, David Tua squared away Shane Sutcliffe in two rounds. Tua had rebounded well from the loss to Ike and was etching closer and closer to the title picture. A fight that had actually been a long time coming. Its inception dates back to Tyson's undisputed title reign when a rising Orland Norris never got a shot at Tyson because of Tokyo Douglas. The fight in no way lived up to the supposed hype as it lasted one round. Tyson had Norris on the defensive until the end of the round where Tyson dropped Norris after the bell in the clinch. He was deducted two points, but Norris refused to answer the bell for the second round citing that he'd injured his knee in the fall. Tyson accused Norris of faking the injury. It was ruled a no contest. Mama Mia, oh me oh my, mother of pearl. Holy shnikes, whatever you wanna say, you're in for a treat if you don't know this one. In what would go down as the Ring Magazine Knockout of the Year, Derek Jefferson and Maurice Harris engaged in one of those rare real-life Rocky fights. Let's take it from the top. Jefferson brought the fight to Harris from the jump, it culminating in two vicious knockdowns in the second. Harris struck back and dropped Jefferson during a wild exchange. Jefferson rose and turned the tide back in his favor in a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange as the round came to a close. In fact, he almost dropped Harris again. The third saw Jefferson maintain control, even battling through some stiff shots from Harris. He landed a sick uppercut that cost Harris his mouthpiece. The fourth saw the same, Jefferson launching Harris's mouthpiece again. The slugfest continued as Jefferson absorbed Harris's offense in the fifth before dropping him again in the sixth. Harris answered, and the momentum swung in his favor as he wailed away on Jefferson before a decapitating left hook landed, ending Harris's night. I don't know who in the world would have survived that left. It held Jefferson's full 35 pound weight advantage and all his will to survive in it. As evil a left hook you will ever see. Ring Magazine rightfully awarded the bout knockout of the year, as mentioned earlier. I highly recommend you go watch this one for yourself in full. Seriously, I almost considered giving it the special must-see fight treatment. It's that good. You want a buffet of brain damage? This is the one for you. Continuing the streak in one of the sweetest knockouts you'll ever see, Olog Maskev floored Haseen Rockman through the ropes and out of the ring in the eight rounds of their bout. Rockman was unable to beat the count and returned to the ring as a melee ensued amongst fans. This loss, coupled with the controversial knockout at the hands of David Tua, hurt Rockman's ranking and pushed his shot for the title back to 2001. The two met again seven years later in a match for the WBC title held by Rockman. Maskev again stopped Rockman for the win, this time in the 12th and final round. And before we move on, wow, that's two spectacular knockouts on one night. What a night.
unfinished business to search for the truth. And that it was. Originally scheduled for September and then pushed back to November, Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield met to definitively settle who the best heavyweight was, on paper at least. Lewis was already viewed as the best in the world. It was seven years to the day since Riddick, Big Daddy Bo, had dethroned Evander Holyfield as undisputed champion. The real deal did better this time around, but Lewis still did the better work. Round seven saw a firework end, with the two blasting another heading toward the bell. When the dust settled, Lennox the Lion Lewis was awarded a unanimous decision and became the first undisputed heavyweight champion of the world since old rival Riddick Bowe in 1992. What a journey in comeback for Lennox. He beat the best of the best and arguably did better against similar opponents he shared with Riddick Bow. The Lion was in his rightful place as the King of the Jungle and the Heavyweight Division was finally unified. Undefeated Michael Grant and controversial Andrew Galata contested one another in the WBC title eliminator to decide who would challenge undisputed Lennox Lewis. Grant was dropped twice in the first round and would survive. Both Galata and Grant were deducted for low blows in the third and sixth, respectively. In the tenth, Galata was dropped by Grant and informed the referee that he no longer wished to continue. Michael Grant had come back to preserve his undefeated streak, leaving Galata in further turmoil. In the last notable fight of the 1990s and in what would be Vitaly's first time going past six rounds, he retained the WBO title when Obed Sullivan failed to answer the bell for the 10th round. Klitschko was winning on all cards and well ahead having won every round. Again, this was the last notable bout of the 1990s, fittingly starring one of the 2000s biggest heavyweight faces. At the end of 1999 and the 1990s as a whole, these were Ring Magazine's top 10 ranked heavyweights. Lennox Lewis had proven himself and stamped his moniker as the Lion on history. He had conquered the heavyweight division, overcoming the unexpected. He never secured the super fight with Riddick Bowe, but history shows that he may not have needed to as he's seen as arguably the greatest heavyweight of all time. He beat them all and had nothing left to prove, but would go into the 2000s to continue his reign. Upset of the year goes to Vitaly Klitschko in his win over Herbie Hyde for the WBO title. Hyde was favored to win and was floored in two rounds. Our round of the year goes to round seven of the Lewis Holyfield undisputed rematch. Fight of the year goes to the Grant Galata fight, which saw Grant come back from being dropped twice in the first round and stop Galata in the 10th. Without a shadow of a doubt, the undisputed champion is our fighter of the year. Lennox Lewis was the best of the best. On January 3rd, the boxing world lost one of its great warriors who never won the big one. Irish Jerry Quarry competed against some of the best heavyweights the sport had ever seen and did well enough in his own right. He'd been entered into the Hall of Fame back in 1995 and suffered from dementia until his death. Rest in peace, champ. On March 28th, the WWF Brawl for All, a boxing tournament held by the WWF, concluded with winner Bart Gunn getting a match with Butterbean in WrestleMania 15. Butterbean floored Gunn in 35 seconds. 
This entire tournament was a mess. Having a shoot fighting tournament in scripted sports entertainment is begging for trouble. Here's another event for another video for another channel down the line. Be looking out. On the subject of Butterbean, Eric Esch brought fireworks and endless entertainment to the boxing world in the 90s, starting in 1994. He would continue through to 2007 before returning for one-offs in 2009, 2012, and 2013. Do yourself a favor and look up some highlights of the Enigma. You won't be disappointed. Of course, I'll cover Butterbean down the line here on Boxingpedia. On June 6th, Alex Stewart had his last bout against Jorge Luis Gonzalez in Las Vegas. He was stopped in the second round. On June 18th in Fayetteville, North Carolina, Bone Crusher Smith had his last match against former rival Larry Holmes in a losing effort in which he was stopped in eight rounds. It was a rematch of their 1984 bout in which Holmes also stopped Smith in 12 rounds. On September 3rd, the big cat Cleveland Williams passed on. He was one of the great contenders of the 50s and 60s, having fought the best his era had to offer. His career will be covered in greater detail down the line. Jose Ribalta finished his career on October 8th. He'd spent the 90s facing off against valiant competition in mostly losing efforts. His opponents included Tim Witherspoon, Bruce Seldon, Frank Bruno, Michael Dokes, Larry Holmes, Tony Tubbs, Vitaly Klitschko, and Razor Ruddick. Ribalta was most notable for his 1986 bout with Mike Tyson, in which he came just a minute shy of taking Tyson the distance. Overall, 1999 was the year the boxing world had waited for since Riddick Bowe trashed the WBC belt at the end of 1992. There was finally an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Just what would the 2000s hold in store for the heavyweight? In no particular order, here are some bouts that happened in the 2000s that are 90s bred. The bizarre Mike Tyson-Andrew Galata fight. Lennox Lewis easily squaring away Michael Grant. The Holyfield Ruiz trilogy that saw Holyfield win the first, Ruiz win the second, and the third be a controversial draw. The Holyfield Rockman bout that saw Rockman suffer the horrible swelling after a headbutt and Holyfield win by split decision. Roy Jones Jr. finally stepping up to heavyweight and taking the WBO strap off John Ruiz. Michael Moore and David Tua, which saw Tua floor Moore in 30 seconds. Lennox Lewis and David Tua, which saw the Lion put on a boxing lesson. Ray Mercer and Shannon Briggs, which saw Briggs come away with the win. Lennox Lewis and Vitaly Klitschko, which saw the controversial TKO6 finish in favor of Lennox who would retire after the bout. Ray Mercer versus Vladimir Klitschko, which saw Vlad stop Ray in the sixth. Spoilers, but we'll get there anyway. And however, there was one match that had been lost that we finally got in 2002. is on. Finally, Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson met in a bout that acted as the true exit of the 1990s. The build-up and hype was insane as Tyson was a loose cannon completely out of control. There was trouble finding a venue as most states refused to grant Tyson a license. Tennessee gave Tyson the nod and the pyramid would see the bout. Lewis put his unified lineal WBC IBF and newly gained Ring Magazine recognition up for grabs. The bout saw Lennox Lewis dominate Mike Tyson after surviving the initial onslaught from Tyson. 
He knocked Tyson out in the eighth and silenced any doubt that he was the best of his generation. The 1990s was finished with few loose ends left. If I had to reward a round of the decade, I'm giving it to the 10th round of the first Holyfield Bo fight. Bo nearly eviscerated Holyfield, who returned from near oblivion to shake Bo until a back and forth slugfest ended the round. As for the fight of the decade, I'm giving it to the first bout between Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bo in 1992. The two men destroyed one another, with Bo coming out on top to capture the undisputed crown and splinter it until Lennox Lewis brought it back together in 1999. And the fighter of the decade, as he so rightfully earned, is Lennox the Lion Lewis. He beat the best, avenged his loss, and left zero doubt who the king was. Even more impressive was that Lewis was the first British champion in a century and re-established his country as a premium force in boxing. The United Kingdom still holds a tight grip over the heavyweight division and sport today. The rivalry of the decade, as if there could be any other, was the Holyfield Bowl trilogy. I highly recommend that you go and watch all three fights to completion. You will not be disappointed. If I had to rank the years of the 90s, they would go 1998, 1999, 1990, 1993, 1991, 94, 95, 96, and 97 could all honestly trade the number one spot. If I had to rank the top 10 fighters of the decade from bottom to top, they would go Andrew Galata, Donovan Razor Ruddick, Tommy the Duke Morrison, Merciless Ray Mercer, Double M Michael Moore, Iron. Mike Tyson, Big George Foreman, Evander, The Real Deal, Holyfield, Riddick, Big Daddy Bo, and Lennox, The Lion, Lewis. A huge thank you to every single one of the warriors, listed and unlisted, who made the 1990s the last spectacular decade for heavyweights. Well, everyone, there's only one thing left to do. End this trilogy as I've promised with the what if tournament I've always wanted to see. Just what would happen if the 10 best fighters of the 70s and 90s respectively engaged in a tournament to crown a unified heavyweight champion? Well, you can find out right now. The link is in the description and there should be a bubble on screen for you to go to find out who the best heavyweight ever is. See you over there and stay frosty, everyone. This is the Charles Jackson, author of the Boxing Encyclopedia. See you soon. And before we go, if you'd like the best highlight reel that I've personally seen of the 1990s heavyweight division, Check out the masterpiece that is We Talk Boxing's 90s Furious Angels Cut. The link is in the description, in the pinned comment, and there should be a bubble on screen. Amazing stuff, and thank you, WT, for the love over on Reddit a while back. I told you you'd be in this bad boy. All right, y'all. Peace.